brethren, it's important that we just fellowship. Amen. Now, you saw how they worshiped the Lord in the beginning. They came right on in with the spirit of worship. They came right on in. You didn't have to, they didn't have to give 14 testimonies. Jesus. Amen. To get into praise and worship. But they were ushered right, and they ushered us right into praise and worship. Praise and everyone picked up in that coal and reverberated what God has in store for us and gave us that same vision of joy that comes from worship. But I'm here to tell you that we have a day now. God said he's coming to judge the living yes, and the dead. Yes. We got to preach the word whether they want to hear it Amen. or not. So. Now we can tell a whole lot of stories and give a whole lot of nursery rhymes. Mary had a little lamb and Jesus was his name boy and everywhere and sin was he was sure to show up. Right. I don't need your nursery rhyme. I need you to tell me thus said the Lord. And if thus said the Lord is that you're going down the wrong path. That's what I need to hear. Amen. Because you know what I found out that you can't get blessed of oh God by just paying your tithe. See, paying your tithes keeps you from being cursed according to Malachi 3. But you don't get a blessing from just paying your tithe. And if they, if they happen with Dr. Vernon Jones, they will find Dr. Stephen. 
got the same last name. Sit 
sensitivity. Oh, we got so many folk in the church. No power in the church. But we got a whole lot of sensitive folk in the church. You can't say anything about, you can't even, you're not too talking about this. But you're just talking about sin. How you want to eradicate sin. How you hate the devil. How you hate the devil's uncle. You hate the devil's mama. You hate everything about the devil. And you can't even talk about the devil in your own church anymore. Because people are just sensitive. Don't worry. 
Uh, but it says, first of all, every preacher or minister that criticizes Thomas, criticizes Dennis for that of Jesus has to repent. That's all of us. All of us. Because I was reading something for the last two weeks, and I kept reading the same passage of scripture, John, the 20th chapter, when Mary went to the sepulchre, and then the other disciples went to the sepulchre. And then when Jesus showed up, he came through the door. Nobody opened the door, Jesus just walked in and appeared unto them. And the Bible said, he showed them, read John, the 20th chapter. He showed them, amen, his heart. He showed them. Amen. The, the, the sword, scar, or the, the piercing in his side. Right. Now listen, he showed them because he knew they were doubters too. Yes. All right. All right. All right. So you want to criticize everybody else for saying what we wanted to say. Uh -huh. You know, for doing what we wanted to do. Yeah. The Bible said that John, amen, John points out that the disciples were there and just Thomas or Didymus that was not there. And Thomas was not there, so he didn't see what Jesus And so when he showed up the second time, the Bible said, Didymus was there, Thomas was there, and Thomas said, wait a minute, I'm not going to believe unless you show me too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And Jesus took the opportunity because Thomas said what the others wouldn't say. He said, well, blessed are those who have not seen, yet they have believed. Good God from Zion. So he wasn't there, he wasn't there when they presented, when Jesus presented himself to them and showed the scars and showed a man the, the wounds that was in his side. But yet when Jesus showed himself to him, he said, I believe. And I'm here to tell you right now that I believe that God wants to take us back in a way. No, we're not going to go back and visit all the ignorance that was in the church, but I believe that God wants to take us back to when we had praying mothers. God wants to take us back to when we had power in the church. Oh, Fill the temple that means victory after victory. 
The Bible said the elders came back and asked, Amen, Eli, the great prophet, said, Why has God slain us? Yes. Yes. They said, Well, why has God slain us? And why not the Philistines? You know, I can tell you, when the, the demons have taken over the church, the power has left the building. You know it has left when you begin to see the enemy rise up in the church. Amen. You know what? It's an interesting thing. I talked about the, the demonic infiltration. But you know what? Somebody said to me the other day, said, I don't see you casting out devils. And you know what's so sad? That the devil won't even come into the church. <laughs> that's, that's a sad thing. Not that the devils are not being cast out, but the devil won't even come to church anymore. Jesus, Jesus. Because the Bible said there's a form of godliness but no power. They deny the power. Jesus. The next time they went up against the Philistines, the Bible said 30,000 dropped dead. Jesus. So it's not, it's not good enough that without the power of God invested inside of you, it's not good enough that you go up and lose the first time, but then you go and pick a fight again with the same woman. And then you lose 30,000. I'm going to tell you right now, we don't have time for 30,000 souls to be lost after we've already lost 4,000 souls. I believe in this conglomeration right here, if we get the power back into the church, and we have the power to get folk delivered, power to get folk healed, power to get folk set free, I believe we can take this whole state of Virginia. What we got to do is say, He didn't 
die. Even when his own heir parents were killed, he only died when he said the power is gone. The Holy Ghost is gone. The anointing is gone. And as a matter of fact, I got a call sent to your feet. I this, well, I'll skip over two or three. This is the foreclosure. But the last thing that happened in 1 Samuel was that Phineas' wife was expecting while all this was going on. She was expecting, and there was great joy and great excitement because she had a husband, the husband who was going to be the great priest. She had a father-in-law who was already the great anointed priest of God, the one that did prophesy. Amen. And God gave him utterance. Amen. That of these things that are going to pass. But when she had the child, after all of this had taken place, she was so distraught that the power was no longer present. And she named the child Ichabod. Oh, Jesus. Ichabod is interpreted no more power. Power is gone. We need it back. There are those that still need to be destroyed. There are folk that lives whose lives still need to be enriched. There are folk whose lives still need to be touched. There are folk that still need to be delivered and set free. I know every leader knows we got some situations going on in our own churches. Dr. Stephen Jones, it ain't happened yet, but it will happen. But if we have the power, we can move into the next dimension. If we have the power, we can break it up. We have power, we can help our neighbors, our sisters, and our brothers. I am so sad. Oh my God, I had some wonderful message I wanted to preach. Oh my God, I preached them all week long. And I kept coming back to these same passages of scripture. Oh my God, I had a message in Acts, the second chapter, that was going to blow your mind. It blew my mind. Uh, and that made it why I couldn't preach it because it just blew my mind right on out. Uh, and God said, No, I need you to talk about it. Well, they won't hear me again, Lord. They don't What I'm going to give them. Young folk, Power. I repent as a leader of the faith. Mm -hmm. I repent for allowing the power to be so excused. My, my, my. We have a form of godliness. God. There's no power. Amen. Because it never took us praying so many times for the same thing. Nothing happened. Right. Come on. We've never had folks show up in revival after revival after revival and they get in the same line every time. Come on, come on, come on. This year, this time, they got in the line for financial deliverance. And it takes God that many times to get it right. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. Jesus. That's the reason why 